Hey guys, welcome to Monday Morning Commentary where we review a match from our past and I have Tommy Thunder here with me and today we're going to review a match from 2003 in the height of our backyard wrestling careers. Uh, this was a, uh, a match that would air on our public access uh, channel but we actually chose not to air it because it was so bad at the time. Now this was the last match you would have before you were going off to be a sailor. Okay. Yeah. Is that what, what, what do you call that when you're going to be a... Uh, yeah, a seaman. No, uh, I was joining... I was uh, Joining the Navy yeah, is a better way Navy. of saying it, yeah. Okay, Not just going to like sailor. sail the, the whatever, the catamaran, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah. But our standards were apparently too high, and I haven't revisited this match in a couple years, so let's see what, what all the fuss was about. So just for... I did not watch this match beforehand, so uh, yeah, we're gonna go into it. I'm gonna go into it blind because I don't. Remember, this is from 2003. We're in 2021. Uh, I don't remember the match, but uh, maybe it'll give us a fresh take on everything. Not doing any preparation because that's usually how you go into things, right? Yes. Good. I'll start the match. Here we go. All right. So for whatever reason, the entrances were cut off on this, and the entrances for our backyard days was was a big thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know why the entrances were cut off, but this is this would be your final match. Um, uh, you know, later this day we would tear down this ring and would move to a new location. Um, so this is kind of like the end of it. This was the yeah. end, yeah. And uh, you know, we we all kind of had that feeling where it didn't go the way we wanted it to. Mm -hmm. uh, me, you did, and Ricky, who's the guy in the orange tights there, um, or trunks, whatever you call him, uh, also had that same feeling. It just wasn't. What it oh, needed to be, sorry, it was. <laughs> now, just for a backstory, he was doing a character called Rico DMF was the name, and it was the name he had since we were kids. And he was changing into this character, split personality like Mick Foley, um, where uh, he would turn into a character called Criminal Cage, who was from prison, mm -hmm. um, not unlike Nails from WWF. Uh, and what you guys are wrestling on is a large pool cover, which would cut the crap out of you. Yep, uh, and. The uh, the tarp that's over it. There's a shining wizard. Already. Yeah, shining wizard. Right out of the gate. I loved it. It it felt great doing, but geez, it just did not look good sometimes. Um, and those that you're wrestling on, that's actually crash pads that you guys picked up from. Oh, okay. From yeah, Great from Adventure. Great Adventure when you guys yep. all worked there. So we were lucky to have these giant crash pads that you know. Yeah, you just want to make sure you uh, obviously they didn't fit the ring, so you want to make sure you bumped on on the pads. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh. Wrestling Ricky was always uncomfortable. He he was a very uh, animated person or energetic mm -hmm. person, uh, especially when he wrestled. You kind of like channeled that, and it was hard to uh, work with sometimes, honestly, just because he, he moved around so much. You know, he goes to bump and he's halfway across the ring, and it's like, all right, well now I have to walk over there to catch the him. next thing <laughs> or whatever, or yeah. whatever it was. So his yeah, he was. It was like a coordination thing. I don't know. And this was his, this was his house. We were wrestling in. Yeah. And conversely, right before we wrestled here, we wrestled at your house. Yeah. Um. So it was kind of three of the bigger members of our small backyard company. Yeah. Um, outside of the ring there, and then I think that is Brilla doing yeah, officiate. Yeah. So he was just somebody who came along later on. Um. So is me still kind of using the heel? mentality here i guess a little bit but also like kind of asserting my uh not dominance but i, I don't know I you're going with a the patriotic theme there too you had, for whatever reason you you went with the red and then the oh, singlet the, was white and blue yeah I don't, I don't know if it was on purpose or it was just the the shorts that i got on sale that week <laughs> also it's just a, a, a huge throwback my shoes are those nike shocks that had those little like remember in the, the heel pressure like the springs yeah. almost yeah, that gave you terrible shin splints. Those shin splints. Those things were awful for you, like your general like well being. So yeah. And your singlet, um, which I don't yes, remember where you I got it from, it. but you you cut your singlet. What was the uh, the main uh, site high spots? That, high spots, yeah. So you got it from high spots. I got I was... it from high spots. I ordered it, um, and then like for the dimensions, I was like, yeah, 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 whatever. Dimensions. I don't know what those are. <laughs> Enter, and it came. It was about this big, and. Uh, it's where the term moose knuckle came into play, and I was like, I cannot wear this. So, so you just cut it off and used it as a... Again, there's Ricky's, uh, you know, coordination, or lack of, where, you know, he's, he's all over the place. He, he kind of just... He, I don't know what it was. It was just... Well, so we would call that super... It looked like a super kick that time because I was short, mm -hmm. but we called that a super, a super chest. chest. 
because he could never connect in anybody's face but, with it. What, where I was going with it is like he kicked you, his other foot somehow wrapped around the bottom rope <laughs> and then fell into the front of the ring. And it was just like that coordination piece. Yeah. I always I always enjoyed wrestling, Ricky, personally. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what's happening here, but this is not it. Yep. <laughs> this is, no. That was and a... you guys have had, had had good matches before. Yeah. So this was the anomaly and i think in our heads it needed to be so much bigger because you were going away for six months to a year mm -hmm. oh no this is when when i joined the navy or when i was supposed to join the navy i was supposed to be gone for four years so yeah so this was the end yeah. of your like we weren't going to be doing this still in four years mm -hmm. we were we did <laughs> as the last episode when we did 2017 we, we were but you know, in our heads, four years was that was a, a friggin' eternity. That was all of high school. Mm -hmm. You were gonna be gone essentially. Yeah. So this needed to be something miraculous, and it just it wasn't. No. And, and maybe it wasn't even that bad. But and it this just is, oh, okay. So this is where criminal cage comes yeah, out. Sorry to okay. Push off. So he's doing the like the heavy breathing and all that. Um, I don't know if the audio will be on when everybody's watching this, but he's. Trying to change his voice a little bit and now throwing punches. More intense, you know. And yeah, I poked him. He <laughs> killed his cut off there. Yeah. It's come back. <laughs> was a little bit, what is it? Uh, it was a little aggressive in the ring back then. Cause it was kind of, again, this is where it was like Big Fish, Little Pond. Because we had the wrestling, you know, we we had done a live show or two at this point. Yeah, just a week, uh, the day before. Well, no, I mean live a live. Uh, oh, we had, yeah, for Roman yeah. Farms and all that. And we yeah. had, uh, you know, we had some training. So we were, again, like Big Fish Little Pond here. So they kind of just took whatever I said and, and went with it. Or I would dominate the match and not let them get anything in more I mean, let's not pass over the fact that there was times that we took this more seriously than the stuff we did professionally. Yeah. Um, because, you know, you're 17, 18... This is this was your world essentially, it's and it's going on uh, television. Yeah, it was a public access channel. I mean, listen, it, it's, again, small potatoes, but you know, we would get stopped in the hallway or what? Oh, you guys do that B4W or whatever? Yeah, like it, you know, that was kind of a, a big ego inflate back then. So, well, I always I always throw this example out there, but you know, you compare it to today's TV, you have a thousand channels, mm -hmm. probably more now. Um, whereas back then you had 77 channels. Yeah. So the likelihood of somebody coming across our show, an hour and a half show on a Wednesday night, was pretty good. Yeah. Back then there wasn't wrestling on every night like there is now. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was high visibility. And, uh, yeah, so I don't, for whatever reason, this, and it's not striking so like, what, me as... What punch was that? I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, Mine weren't great. I'm not going to sit there and say, like, compare apples to apples here. But, like, he just... His body moved in like a windmill type way. <laughs> I, I'm looking at it. I'm sorry, as, I'm doing exactly what I, I didn't want to do. <laughs> I think this is not great, but I don't think it's comparatively bad to the other stuff that was around during that time. Yeah, I love the drop toe hold. One of my favorite. favorite really? Holds. Yeah. Just really? really like really screwing with people. You know what I mean? Like who don't know what's coming. Like, <laughs> what the hell are you doing? Man? I did that to TLD in the real ring, and everybody almost had a <laughs> conniption over it. Why? Because I didn't call it. I just did it oh. so he would know to fucking protect himself. <laughs> and everybody acted like I was a bully, and he was he he pretended he was all hurt and everything, and I knew he wasn't hurt. And then he sulked in the corner so he didn't have to take any more bumps, and and then I said. Hey, does anybody want to do a show? Who wants to do one? And mm -hmm. he raised his hand, so he was totally fine. Yeah, that and was that'd be interesting to find too. Some of those training tapes we did. Yeah. I only have like small clips. I have the show. What was he trying to do there? Do you remember that? Yeah, it's a Russian leg sweep, but he grabbed you in the top of the head, and when you're supposed to grab the arm and around the top of the right. Yeah, so Russian leg sweep. I don't know why he just touched the top of your head. It was and like fell back. You're going down. Yeah, and this was the Duke to fire. No, this I think he's setting up for it right now. He's just doing like a cross arm choke. Okay. Essentially, now the the cool thing about this backyard is randomly you would get dogs that would walk into yeah, the so ring. Whatever dogs they had at the time. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah. Safe. Which they might be buried back there at this they point. They definitely are. That's what I was digging up when we were back there <laughs> yeah. a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. Our um our advertising was on point though. There's like three or four signs pointing B4W. to our website. Yeah, with the website, which was a big thing in 2003. Yeah, and that was a totally free website. Yeah, you could only have like <laughs> eight pictures up at a time, <laughs> otherwise your site would crash. 
Um, so we'd have to delete them all the time, which is so, so frustrating. That's why I'm <sighs> such a st nice half a leg drop. I'm such a stickler for everybody out there saving as much stuff as you can because there's so much stuff we had to delete mm -hmm. to save space because there wasn't a thing like these hard drives and stuff like that. that yeah. Everything was on a floppy disk. and Floppy disk or a VHS tape. <laughs> yeah, so you know what I mean? Like, we, we didn't save everything, and that's... It, it like eats away at me that not having everything <laughs> see it um, eats away at me knowing that all of this is still out there and saved <laughs> and stored and, it's hidden know. it's hidden though yeah, other yeah. than the stuff we're putting out <laughs> <Yeah>. there <laughs> nobody's able to actually see it yeah. so yeah this this one's still going here yeah so uh, again you were doing like a he was doing a snapmare there mm -hmm. but your face was already on the ground oh, so so, and this, yeah. is, this is one of the things I was thinking about the other day too. Is like the character, the characters of wrestling, and they said it um, really great in this whatever I was watching, where it's like they're just like you, but the volume's turned up. Yeah, uh, I think The Rock actually said that. So one of my favorites. But it's like when you introduce these artificial characters or like you know whatever it is, I just I think it's disingenuous. And it's not anything against them because this is what the era we grew up in, where it was like that character wrestling. You know yeah. what I mean? The Iron Sheik or Jake the Snake or British Bulldog, or whatever. Like those were the characters we're used to. But like, when you find something that's you know part of yourself, then it's more believable and it's I don't want to say easier, but it's again it's easier for you to pull off. So, so that to your point i think you're trying to make that more about ricky um ricky not successfully nailing this character at least at this point mm -hmm. because it wasn't true to who he was whereas his rico character rico was, a was bit... so much yeah it was yeah. just ricky again with the volume turned up and then so if you had to point out what your character was that move scared the hell out of me every time yeah if you had to point out off, by the way Sorry. that's fine i got okay. that one you got um, four more the battery probably died on that okay. one um if you had to point out what your character was what was it what was your gimmick? I don't know. And that's what, like, I I was thinking about this, like, in lead up to these to these shows that you wanted to do. Like, what was my character? You know what I mean? Like, you had the, you're, it wasn't a Denver, like, a character, but it was like a, you're Canadian. You know what I mean? Like, that's what you just kind of went with. I don't know what Tommy Thunder was. For, it was just, again, me without the social repercussions of being an asshole. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can go out there and be a jerk. And, again, maybe that's somewhat lead over into who I am now. Uh, but I I don't know. It was just I, what I, I wanted to be. I, I wanted to be an athletic or uh, not aerobic, uh, you know, flippy flippy guy. And even though I was one of the bigger dudes, it uh, yeah, I just tried to push myself. I guess I don't know. I still don't know what my character was. I if can, you had to, go ahead. I can tell you, uh, at least in relation to the backyard stuff, pro stuff might be harder to to nail down. Um, I think the pro stuff towards the end was more almost like a Will Ferrell esque when Will Ferrell's being a d bag. Yeah, yeah. That's that was your pro gimmick. Yeah, he was a gimmick. Big, yeah, he was a, a big influence, yes. especially what you're like when you were doing a you were doing a faction called Team Symbol, and mm -hmm. that was big during that time. Yeah. Um, so I would say your backyard thing was the, uh, and you won't get this reference, but people out there might. Undertaker when he was doing the American Badass where he was doing. The I'm the vet and you're gonna listen to me, mm -hmm. and it would later become the, the guy you were playing the character of, I don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've, I've definitely and played that, that that became a funny thing, to, so much so that the thing we did and you probably don't remember this either. We did a thing with you at this building, and this was about it followed this vignette where you were still waiting at public access, begging us yeah, yeah. to let you be a part mm -hmm. um, of the show, which is so opposite of your character when we last saw you. Yeah, which was kind of how that, I guess, on-screen persona was kind of how, I want to say, Joe was behind the scenes. So I don't know if that was really a character. That's, yeah, that, that's just him. Yeah. You're talking about Joe D. Yeah. Yeah, he was just... And I don't, I don't think that Jody had a thing where he didn't want to be there. It's just his personality was just he didn't want to be anywhere. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it, it's funny too because like you know that on on screen persona of like, what, what, like what am I doing here? Yeah, it's it, it, yeah. Some of it was true, not like why am I here, but it's also like you would come out with these crazy ideas and I was just like, what the hell, man? Like what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> but then it was also like, all right, well, he's you've said that stuff before, and I've just learned to trust you. I'm like, yeah, I might not want to, but 
it's going to come out good, or it should at least. So I don't remember that backpack. That's not my backpack. I would know. Um, sorry. Total, <laughs> total off the bike. But so, yeah, I, that was our. Go ahead. So I was going to say, side note, we only had one tag belt at the time. We were making as many vignettes <laughs> as we could with the one belt. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting on the other one to get there. Oh, I remember that. Um, but that I, was that was the match with Ricky. It's like it was just. I don't think it was that bad, honestly, for it, for the time. No, it, it just he was difficult for me to wrestle. I guess is the best way to say it. Um, usually, you know, if you have one of the bigger guys, or like if I'm wrestling you, it's like easy. Like you and I could probably go out and have a match right now, and not really have to call much. You know what we're doing, but like well, I have the trampoline. Yeah, I know you do. Okay. Or the pool. Get real, <laughs> get real saucy. Um, but like you wrestle a bigger guy, you know what you're getting into. But like Ricky was like that in between, like you know, like I'm here, I'm there, I don't know, and like. With the benefit of hindsight, do you think you have a better match with Ricky today than back then, or is it bad for different reasons now? Because neither of you are, are quite active at this point. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about like in, gym in, wise. In wrestling, yeah. I'm, I'm talking about wrestling wise. Is it is it? worse today than it would have been in 2003 for that match anyway so just for perspective so it just helped me kind of wrap my head around this so this is 2003 we had started wrestling in ricky's backyard at what year or would you say so we left your back ricky's backyard in 2001 and we would alternate between your backyard and his okay 2001 2002 is when we went on public access in april and then we literally left your house like a week later and started Okay. Doing shows at his house. So for that year and a half, we were at Ricky's leading up to this is where mm -hmm. we left off. So we had done shows at Roval Farms. The live show was the week before this, um, or the day before this in this case. Um, so you, we had done all that, okay. and you were getting ready to leave is where we left off. Yeah, so side note, I was getting ready to leave for the Navy. I hurt myself the week before I was supposed to go and didn't wind up going. Then got wise and joined the Army instead. And yeah, so... Um, I don't know. It's just it's some like you could have two great wrestlers. They get in the ring together, and it just doesn't look right, or it doesn't. It's just they, they don't flow together, you know. Like twenty twenty one, they don't have the right vibe. But um, I think we're driving a Pontiac vibe here. But it's car. I know. <clears throat> it just it was it was difficult for me to to work with him. I guess it's not his fault. I don't blame him. Have you him. learned anything since then that you can? <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> It was going to be a voiceover where it was a dream or something. I don't remember exactly. Okay. But it was some kind of dream where you, we were seeing you. <laughs> and okay. I don't know. I don't remember either. And so the the funny thing about this is... is no back hair. Uh, <laughs> Maria asked you any final words for B4W, and guess what you said? What? I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. And football. So it was clearly a tape we had taped over. Yeah, yeah. Probably uh, the Super Bowl or something. Probably but... one of your parents' tapes, honestly. Yeah, we stole a lot of those. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, it's just, it's it's hard to wrap my head around with, with him. It's just, it's, it's tough. You know, like, I could, like, Joe D. You know what I mean? Like, him and I, we can go in the ring, we can make a match. So if you have a bad match with somebody, do you take that on, and I know every situation is different, but do you look at that as, that's your fault, or that's their fault, or it's a combination? I think it's... What's the word? It's, like, case by case. Like if I know someone's just, like, either half-assing it, or they're just there to get their shit in and go home, mm -hmm. then it's kind of like, all right, man, well... You know. Or, again, you know, we show up to something, and uh, they're like, hey, what's up, you know, whatever. All right, I'll see you out there, kind of thing. It's like, all right, well, you're not putting any effort into this. Right, right. Um, so, you know, I'm not... Say I'm going to sandbag. I definitely won't sandbag people, but it's not like, okay, well, what are my expectations now? Right. But if, like, you go out there and, like, and Ricky was great at this, like, he would take notes with it. Um, we would rehearse and we would practice. We would do what we would go over the bigger spots to make sure we're good. And that's where everything was good. But it was, like, that, that interpretation or that, that free flow that, you know, I talked about with Carino, where it was, like, that's where things got a little shaky. And that's, that's where the inexperience of all of us showed was... We didn't have that adaptability or that that like flexibility, flexibility or that improv or whatever it is in the middle of a match to go, oh shit, what now? Yep. You know what I mean? Like I and I was famous for this. We'd go over the match six times. We'd get out there. I'd get to a certain blank. spot and just blank out. And like, I hope he remembers because I have <laughs> no idea. And that's where like if you ever see me like a, a put someone down with like a body slam or something, 
and I just pick him up for a sharpshooter. That's me going, <laughs> I don't know what's happening. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. So here we go. We're, we're about to turn this into a shoot match because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's why we save a headlock. I don't do a headlock till later. Headlock, on. <laughs> uh, if you see me do like a leg, uh, leg drops, no, but yeah, maybe a leg drop. But like, those are my like, you know, panic moves. And this is a great saying from the military, but like, you don't rise to the occasion, you fall back on your training. So you fall back on like the moves and shit that you're comfortable oh, right, with. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. So, yeah, I mean, it's not as relevant with wrestling, uh, but you fall back on what you're familiar and comfortable with. So that's, you know, you could see other people do it, I think, if you catch them. Like, you know, the lights go out, things go blank, and you're like, well, what the hell do I do now? <laughs> and it's like, you know, even if the match is really hot and you just see them like lock in. Yep. The sleeper hold, and you're like, oh, no. Ah, <laughs> uh, he forgot everything. I've but, seen people lock up at the end of matches. Yeah. Which, which you never oh, you never do. No. All right, guys. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please beat the out of the like button, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>